Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today with guest star Natalie, username Hello. Natsumi, random person from Origins Game Fair 2016. <laughs> And we are here to give an overview of Dieter Stein's Tintus, published by Clemens Gerhards at Spiel 2016. This is a two-player abstract strategy game that plays in about 10 minutes or so. The rules are dirt simple, but there's a bit going on in the game that you will see in just a few seconds. To set up the game board in Tintus, you lay out the 49 stones, that's seven stones each in seven colors, anywhere on the board, trying to break up groups if you have four or more of a color together. You have a pawn, and the start player is going to take that pawn and put it anywhere they want on the board, claiming the token that occupied that space. The, you are now going to alternate turns, moving this pawn on the board, and you can move it in any of the directions that has a stone present. And you will take the stone that is on that space. If you can collect another stone of the same color by moving immediately, you can do so and you can continue moving until you collect all the stones of that color. Mm -hmm. So, Natalie. I'm gonna grab these blues. Okay. I'll place them right here. And so now I can collect this white, and if I do, I can grab this white, I can collect these two red or those two green, and we will decide to go for the green. Now what you're trying to do is, yes, dominate colors. If you collect all of a color, you win. If that does not happen, and the game ends without someone collecting all of a color, then whoever has at least four colors with at least four tokens in those four colors wins instead. So for example, I can get this green, which gives her those two red, which gives her a majority in red, and maybe I don't want to do that <laughs> just yet. So we'll go with white instead. And you see the colors that each person is collecting, trying to keep them from getting things. If you can collect one stone of each color, then you know that the opponent cannot win because you already have something. And then you're just shooting for majorities and they are trying to stop you from winning immediately. This issue does not matter right now, but if on a turn you would move the pawn or try to move the pawn and there's no stones in any direction, you pick up the pawn, move it to any location with a stone, take that stone, and then your turn ends as in th at the start of the game. So I boxed her in a little bit. She's going to take the stones that I want. I can no longer collect green. <laughs> sure, purple. which gives me a white. No. You're not gonna, yeah, oh, yeah, give me that white. <laughs> That is, you have no choice. Yes. I could just leave. <laughs> you could leave. Flip the table. There you go. Just that. Even though I could potentially take the orange and the other orange, that's leaving the blue open to Natalie. So let's not do that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> you, you could be okay with that. I've given you something else, though. I know. My wonderful little bread. But then you'll get a majority in orange. Mm. But it could be Actually, <laughs> if, if you're okay, I will continue. I'll give you that blue. Huh? I was not thinking clearly. <laughs> I can move if you want, or I can just leave it there. It's up to you. <laughs> We're going to cheat in this game here. Not cheat. <laughs> Not cheat. Maybe but I should, again, I should be more quiet. 
the the tree initially if you're looking at the the branch tree of of what you can do initially it's just simple i look around me in a circle and i see what's there but as you start taking things out the tree gets a little narrower and you can see a little further down the path and initially it's a little too hard to consider but now of course i did this because if you take the blue then i can take the white yes which you let me do because it's a friendly game <laughs> or maybe i could just get the green just or you just white. get the green hey yeah <laughs> But the green doesn't matter because I already have majority on green. Unless you want to do something no, else. No, that blue is little, You're going for the blue. It's too tempting not okay. to take. Okay. And so now we set up a do or die situation mm -hmm. here. Okay. And I'll take, I can take the yellows, correct? Yes. Okay. I think I'm which gives you. Majority. Which gives you three majorities. And you're setting up for an anything but white situation at the end. We're going to avoid this side of the board. <laughs> That's right. Hmm. Yes, I will go here because you cannot take that red because then I can get white. You must take the green. I must take the green. Okay, green. Which doesn't give you a majority anyway. Um, and now here's where things could potentially slow down. You start looking at this and puzzling out what I could force you to do mm -hmm. if I take certain moves. A couple of things are off limits, those two just stopping. So, but I can go through, go here, here. Going to here gives you red, which also sets you with two, one away from winning. And the problem is if I give you that red, actually there's no other way to get these right now they're off the, the unless grid I can pick it up. unless you can pick it up so if we get stranded mm -hmm. then these come into play but that matters only if you already have that one so hmm so so buttons <laughs> um ah and then you start trying to puzzle out different things through we need different strings. Need different strings to, to do this. All right, let's get the purple because now I've got four. Okay. So I have three majorities here. My inclination, I mean, what I don't like to do when I play a new game mm -hmm. is just try to like dive into it and just, just, just hold on a minute. I'm just, just, w just wait here and just like, <laughs> mm, and just figure stuff out because that's kind of boring for you. But I'm also figuring stuff out too. So it's not like I'm true. doing anything. But I, I, I mean, I find, I don't know if this is true or not. This is the way I think about it is that I learn best by doing. I do the it's, same thing. It's better play quickly five times and make mistakes and learn what not to do and sort of internalize that than just like ponder <laughs> and just be like, oh man, I, I think I can think this out if I really like through all the, the branches. But it only takes about a minute to really figure it out. It's not too long. It seems like a lot longer in your head. Not really, because there's only two or three options you can really do. Well, two or three options, but then they off branch of that, out. That's true. once possible. So, and so I went for majority, not letting you in any immediate. Hiding my blue. Yes, hiding that blue. Okay. Oh, but you're gonna take the red, so I have to take the green. <laughs> there's nothing else you know I'm okay with taking that green because I don't think I want you ever going down there so let's see what happens That's right. whoever gets abandoned mm -hmm. is gonna win yes except I can take a red now and keep you from doing that and that no, that no? gives me the win because I go over here. Yes? Yes. You have only one choice to make. Oh, I miscalculated. And then he gets abandoned. Right. No. Yes, you must take the yellow. And then I get to go wherever I want because the lines you are clear. You want to go here? No! <laughs> Victory! There we go. Oh, and then I fell off the board and I. And there's an overview of Tentus, which I've played now 12 times on camera, including our practice game before we started here. 
And all the games last, you know, it's five or ten minutes. It's a very mm-hmm. quick game. And do you have any feedback on two games played now? I think it's a lot of fun. I can see how this can be one of those games where you leave on the table and be like, oh, let's play this for ten minutes and just kind of keep on going. So it's very easy to pick up and play. And I recommend it for a light, abstract game that you don't feel so immersive in it. Okay. As compared to what? Like, like... Yinsh or anything like that where you, it takes up the whole table and you have to spend 20 minutes looking <laughs> at a turn. But I mean, you don't have to spend 20 minutes with Yinsh. No, you don't, but... But you, you do. You do. <laughs> is, is that just because you've played it enough that you're at that point? I've only played it a few times. Okay. Um, so I'm not... But that know, felt heavier Yes, for you. and I've also played it kind of against expert people, so... Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so you were naturally in that mindset of yes. sort of like, I gotta step up my game. Yes. That's right. Where she did not do that here. No. <laughs> Stop, I don't think. I, yes. I mean, the, the game flows very quickly, and I, I've, I've played it with people, and then we, we set up and play again and play again. Now, interesting thing. So I learned this from Dieter Stein at Spiel 2016, and I misheard him initially. And it's kind of interesting when you think of abstract strategy games where the rules are, are typically like two lines or just minimal, mm-hmm. just minimal confusion. And yet I was. I was wrong with how I understood the rules. I initially heard the rules as being, you have to get one of each piece to win. And what's funny is, we played the game, and we were three quarters of the way through before I knew that I was wrong, and yet I don't know if I would have played differently at all. Because if I get one of each piece, you can't win. That's true. And that was the same, it's the same goal as knowing that if you get all seven, you win, well, I'm going to stop you from winning by getting one of each piece. It was, it, it, was, it was this weird crossing of the branches here. And at a certain point while playing, I was definitely trying to keep Dieter from getting this one piece so that I could potentially win. And I had to give it up. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess you're, you're going to get that anyway in the end. And I thought, well, at least I can try for a majority win. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, no, that's it. Oh, that's it clarity that ensued <laughs> on here and it was interesting, just just that that different mindset because i've talked with people in the past about designing similar games where they are clean where the gameplay is clear in a sense that there's there's no confusion as with many games where you have to remember about modifiers and extra cards that are coming yes. into play and all that type of stuff where it's <laughs> it's just the the everything boiled down to simplicity and you want that that clarity of mind to, to actually get into playing. It wasn't quite there yet, but now it is, after a dozen plays. So. It's great that it has kind of a rainbow of colors, so visually it's very easy for me to kind of see everything on the board. That's right. And it helps a lot. Yes, and while you're waiting for your opponent to make their move, you can always use the pieces you've collected to make pictures, to make mosaics. <laughs> or smiley faces. <laughs> and smiley faces, and people, and you do a little stop motion animation with your phone while you're waiting if they are a deep thinker. All right. There you go. An overview of Tintus by Natalie. <laughs> Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today with. Oh, let's start again. <laughs> it's harder with more people. There's more stuff going on. That's right. Woo. Let me go up for the. And I hide your face. You do this. <laughs> the loser face. <laughs> we don't need to see Dude, who That is not it. This is not the room for, for everything on camera.